Percy James Brebner was a British writer. He was born in 1864 in Islington, the son of James Brebner, manager of the National Provincial Bank of England, and Adelaide Taylor. He was educated at King's College and worked in the Shared and Loan Department of the Stock Exchange. He died in London in 1922. Brebner wrote many adventure novels, as well as the Christopher Quarles mystery novels in the Sherlock Holmes vein. Today we shall review his 1899 lost race fantasy, The Fortress of Yadassara. The story begins with Clinton Verrill wandering about somewhere in the Middle East, coming to the small village of Braille simply because he was told there was nothing remarkable to see there. Going to an inn, he hears Mustafa, a native of Braille, speak of a legend of a hidden country beyond the nearby impassable mountains, and how he had seen men in armour entering through secret channels to go back to this country. Humouring him, Beryl promises to take him tomorrow as he plans to look at a nearby waterfall. The two wind up on a rocky ledge they can't get off of, and then Mustafa falls over in the snow and rolls off, until he is hurled either dead or just about to be into a huge chasm, covered like a grotesque ball of snow. Beryl lands somewhat more safely, but is immediately taken prisoner by an Irishman with a sword. Dennis O'Ryan is a servant of the king of this country, Drusenland, and like most foreigners there, was kidnapped and brought to serve the king in secret and having no way to leave the country. Taking Vero as a new recruit to the king, their band is beset upon and taken captive in Tan, and brought to the city, which remains unnamed through the whole book, controlled by Princess Daria. There is a civil war going on, and Princess Daria wishes to overthrow the king and claims to be the true sovereign. But at no point do we get any reason for why this civil war is going on, and the king, despite showing up a few times, wants to measure his strength with the main character by lifting up a Spaniard, doesn't even get a name. Vero is presented to the princess, and to avoid being tied to stakes and killed in the public square like the rest of Orion's men, Orion makes up a lie about Vero being the long-awaited promised knight, who is to discover the great treasure hidden somewhere in Drusenland. He has to play along, serving in Daria's army and being more and more obviously in love with her, to the displeasure of her kinsman, the wicked Count Vasca, who would take her as his wife. Vero's lack of immediate success to either make Daria queen or to find the treasure, and his insistence that soldiers captured on the battlefield should not be killed in public for amusement, make him many enemies. Well, supposedly, as not even the chief priest, after all but one of the priests would turn on him, even gets a name. The same goes for all the knights Vero is friends with who just get called something along the lines of a knight whenever he is talking to them. Vero decides to go to the city of Yadassara, the great fortress of the king, to spy for Daria at his court, but he is found out due to the treachery of a woman he flirted with to try and make the princess jealous. Being thrown into the fortress, he's the first to escape, and has a bit of a tussle in the river with a dead man, before coming back only to find out Daria set off to rescue him with her army a few days ago. He rejoins her, but Vasca betrays them all anyway, and both are thrown into the king's dungeon, and Vero is told to make friends with his executioners, so they might kill him quick, the lot examining his body to see how hard it will be to kill him by accident. Getting out of his cell thanks to Orion, Veril finds Vasca in Daria's cell, kills him, and is about to take on his identity, but then they still have to go down the chute which every cell has to throw dead bodies into the river. Veril, Daria and Orion set off and discover the hidden path out of Drusenland without even trying five pages before the end of the book. There are some good moments, but the society of Drusenland, despite being said to be a mix of various peoples who came from Europe to fight in the last crusade, is never presented to us. Not as a mixture of different societies, nor as a medieval one. The chief way to notice this is a medieval setting is to notice people riding around on horses and having swords, and that's about it. The book is too long, 473 pages for how few characters we get, and the king's immense strength gets brought up several times, but no one ever gets to fight him. 